everyone this is Abdushi here and I welcome you back to our course on machine learning using Python. So we are in the class studying segment and in last few classes we have looked at one of the important algorithm like k-means which is by far the most popular clustering algorithm. We have also seen how some of the issues of k-means are solved in k -midoid. Okay. Uh, today we are going to take a look at another algorithm named as dbscan. So this acronym is more used than the full form. However, for everyone's knowledge, this is called as density-based spatial clustering against application of noise. There are a couple of terms only on which I want your attention. One is the term called as density. Okay, This D stands for density and another term is noise. So these are a couple of terms where we want more of your focus. So the presentation is structured like this. So we are going to start with a discussion on density, radius and neighborhood. On that context, okay, on the context of density, radius and neighborhood, we are going to discuss about core points, border points and noise points. And using this definition, we are going to look at the algorithm. And finally, we'll look at some of the advantage and disadvantage of the algorithm as well as we'll mention very briefly about couple of recent research works we are, which are catching a lot of community's interest. Okay, so let us say you have a very, very simple scenario where uh, you have only two variables, okay, two independent variables and you want to cluster them. And let's say I pick one point this and I want to find the density of this point. So, you know, by your intuition, you know that density is always associated with an area, right? So, how do I associate an area with this point? So, I can probably draw a circle around this point, okay? What will be the radius? I can take an arbitrary radius to start with. So, let's say, you know, I pick a radius like this and I draw a circle, okay? And in that case, you know, I have four points, including in itself, enclosed in this circle, okay? So, this is actually density of this area or this density is associated with this particular point, okay? Now, this particular radius length is called as epsilon, okay? So, this is one of the very important parameters of dbscan algorithm. And how this can, you know, uh, affect the density or the neighborhood, okay? So, uh, if I keep it very, very small, then what can happen is that only this point is itself in its neighborhood, okay? So, the density is 1. And on the other hand, if I keep a radius or epsilon very, very high, then what can happen is that all the points in our data set can come inside this uh, neighborhood, okay? So, uh, this, as I said, so this area is also called as neighborhood, okay? All right. Uh, let's now go ahead and look at some of the definitions. So, okay, density is number of points within a specified radius or epsilon, which we have already discussed. We look at the definition of core point now. So, a point is a core point if it has at least a specified number of points within epsilon. Okay, so this minimum points is another parameter of this algorithm. So, two parameters which drive this algorithm, one is epsilon, another is mean points, okay. So, these are points that are at the interior of a cluster and when we calculate this mean points, the point itself or the point is also counted. Next, let's look at the definition of border point. So, border point is not a core point, however, it is in the neighborhood of a core point, okay. And finally, a noise point is any point that is not a core point or a border point, okay? Now, let's go ahead and look at an example. So, here, minimum points is taken as 7. So, if I look at this particular point, which is A, you know, and we have drawn a circle with, with this epsilon, we see that there are 7 points, you know, within this particular uh, circle. So, you know, this is definitely a core point. Now, if you look at B, and again, if we have drawn a circle, we see that there are four points within this, uh, within this neighborhood or within this epsilon radius, okay? So, this is definitely not a core point. 
However, out of these points, I know that A is a core point. So, B will be a border point. Okay. Now, let's look at C. When we look at C, first of all, when we draw a radius with epsilon, there are only two points. And this is neither a uh, core point. None of these are actually core points. So, this C will actually be a noise point. So this is how, you know, you when you get the point, you scan them and put labels. This is core point, this is border point, this is noise point. Let's look at the algorithm now. So the scanning is done and the noise points are eliminated. Next, what is done is that uh, we look, we perform clustering on the remaining points and we set current clustering level is 1. So basically, we start with the first cluster. And then for all core points, what we do is, if it is not visited earlier, then, and it is not labeled basically, then we increase this cluster level because we are going to form a new cluster. And uh, this current core points cluster level will be this level, okay? Then what we do is, for all points in the neighborhood, except the ith point itself, okay? So if it doesn't have a cluster level, then level the points with cluster level as current cluster level, okay? And the loop closes. So, these are certain advantages. The first advantage is that we are only scanning one time, okay? So, this is one of the advantages of DB scan. Second thing is that we get something as noise point. So, this is extremely critical. So, uh, you know, you know that this particular, uh, this particular observation doesn't fit at all in the population, okay? So, these are noise. I don't need to, you know, create clusters from them, okay? And the basic idea is that actually, you know, you can have uh, all core points as individual clusters, okay? Now, if, you know, any one, any core point is actually within the neighborhood of another core point, you basically merge them, okay? So, that is in essence, uh, essence what this algorithm is telling you, all right? Now let us look at uh, let us look at a demonstration like this. Okay, so this is very very interesting. So if you have in 2D plane a, a pattern like this where you know that you know k-means would have failed like anything, at the very first step, what uh, DBSCAN does is it actually identifies the core points. Okay, so these these green points, if you see, are your core points. Okay. So these are identified at the very first and then you find the border points. So border points are your blue points. Okay. So these are close to your core points. Okay. And then finally you have some noise point. So in case of K means what would have happened is maybe, you know, it would have created a cluster like this. Okay. Including the noises. Okay. So that would have disrupted the clustering result. Okay. Now uh, let's see how DBSCAM performs the clustering. Okay, so these are your original points and, uh, you know, DBSCAN can find clusters like this, okay. Beautifully, it can find different clusters, okay. And, uh, you know, so first thing is that it is restrained to noise, okay. And secondly, it can handle clusters of different shapes and sizes. So, if you remember, K-means always had a tendency to find circular clusters, okay. And clusters of same size, same size meaning same number of observations, okay? All right, now uh, let's look at another example and let's understand the sensitivity to parameters. So, you know, if I change the epsilon, okay? So, if I keep an epsilon which is bigger, maybe it can find clusters like this, okay? However, if I, you know, reduce my epsilon, I can get different type of clusters, okay? So, which one? So, maybe, you know, this is more natural However, if you reduce your epsilon, you know, you will, you will get a completely different and distorted clustering pattern, okay? So, here is another example, okay? So, if you keep epsilon reasonably good, so these are the two clusters that you can see. And when you, you know, in, when you increase the, or when you decrease the epsilon, then what happens is that the clustering pattern changes it is get, getting more and more local. Finally, this is completely local, okay? So, these parameters are actually your driving things. These are to be fixed at the very beginning. How to fix, fix that? 
So there are two parameters, mean points and epsilon. Now, uh, this is a literature that we are reviewing by Sander, which suggests that you start with, you know, setting the mean points as two into dimension. So, if you have ten features, okay, and uh, you have, uh, you have, you want to find out the mean point, so you start by having it as twenty. All right, okay, two into ten. However, uh, what about this epsilon now? So epsilon actually, uh, you know, when we when we live, when we will draw this and resolve this, we'll find probably some similarity with how we are finding k in case of k means. Okay. So what we do is we actually find something called as a k distance plot. Okay. So let's show you the figure and then we'll discuss about it. So basically, what you do is for each one of the points, for each one of the points, you find the distance with itself. With, with the neighbor which is by distance fifth from you okay so fifth nearest distance so if you are looking at the kth neighbor then you are actually you will call it as k distance and this is nothing but a k distance plot so what you do is for each one of the observation you plot the distance with the fifth nearest neighbor okay and you basically sort the distance and plot like this okay and what you see is that where there is a sharp rise, when there is a sharp rise, then you probably know that this is where probably where noise is setting in. Okay, so this is from where the noise is setting in, and this will be a good choice for your epsilon. Okay, so mean points I gave you an idea, and with this k distance plot, you can also fix your epsilon. All right, now. Uh, of course, you know, uh, DB scan is not a panacea, it cannot solve everything. So, uh, you know, if you have clusters with very different density, okay, so li like you see, this is a cluster, you know, this is a cluster, these three are also clustered and overlapped, okay. So, you know, if you, if you uh, play with different values, you will see that uh, this particular one cannot identify these three clusters, so these are merged and you know, if you re if you increase epsilon, uh, then probably you know these clusters can be found out. However, you know this entire thing gets merged over here, right? So this is one of the cases where there is very varying density. DB scan will not give you a very good result. Okay. Uh, so apart from varying density, DB scan also kind of fumbles when you have high dimension of data. The reason is very simple. The concept of distance become very, very elusive when you go for high dimensions. As and as density is directly related with distance because you are drawing a circle with a radius, right? Uh, so that itself gets a little bit elusive when you go for higher dimensions. Okay. So these are some of the remarks. So DB scan uses a density based definition of a cluster it is rel relatively resistant to noise so this is one of the very important points and can handle clusters of arbitrary shapes and sizes so this is also very important however db scan has trouble when when clusters have widely varying density so only when it is widely varying it is an issue it also has trouble with high dimensional data because density is more difficult to handle or, or difficult to define for such data okay and it can be expensive computationally because you know you need to when you find need to find the nearest neighbor it actually requires computing all pairwise proximities okay so if you have 10 points you need to find all the 10 into 10 distances okay for db scan to work because once you have calculated this distance you scan through them level them as you know core points border points and noise points and then the algorithm uh, you know proceeds all right now as i said couple of research papers are not going into too much detail so this is one of the research papers published in a leading conference called a sigmod and eventually it got best paper which with the title goes db scan revisit revisited misclaim unfixability and approximation 
so essentially you know uh, most of the algorithms or most of the works that are happening are happening to bring down the time complexity okay so this was one of the one of the papers again where they tried to bring down the complexity uh, so there is a claim uh, you know in in two dimension actually uh, algorithm can take a complexity of n log n uh, however you know as it goes to three dimension or three features or more it is n square Okay, so they have uh, shown some intelligent techniques. However, uh, one interesting thing is that this was a paper in 2015, got the best paper, got a, quite a few citations. This is a paper from 2018, which actually criticized this particular paper. Okay, so these also had, you know, got or, you know, caught the community's attention a lot. All right. So these are what I uh, intended to discuss about DBSCAN. You know, like our all uh, algorithms or all classes, please feel free to you know give your questions and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching.